Hello, Pastor Steve Waldron here with New Life Pentecostal Church in Albany, Georgia. A couple of books on the current technological landscape written by Jared Lanier. Is it Jared or Jared? Jared Lanier. Uh, fantastic books. Now you might say, who's Jared Lanier? Jared Lanier, back in the 80s, worked at Atari. And so in 1985, he was the first one to come out with what was known as virtual reality. And he's credited with popularizing the term virtual reality. He teaches out at like the Google Institute, and uh, he's a special advisor for Microsoft, the Microsoft University. Uh, he's considered to be one of the most brilliant thinkers and forward thinkers of our time. And he's come out with two great books on what technology is doing to people. Another fascinating thing is, is he's also a classical musician and a classical musician writer and a collector of classical musical instruments. So that's what I was just reading. It's fantastic, fascinating to me, some of the musical instruments that he's got. So let's look at this first book. This one came out, I think, in 2007. You are not a gadget. You are not a gadget. And what he is trying to say is how gadgets, technology dehumanizes us. He goes into screen time. He goes into the, the thinking processes, the neurons, the development of the brain, the social interactions, and how this is in effect, the last 10 years is the greatest revolution in world history because we're thinking differently than we thought for the first 6,000 years of human existence. We're interacting with people. People are the Snapchat generation. They're the selfie generation. They're the Insta, think of that, Instagram generation, the 140 characters or less generation. They're trying to come out with less than 140 characters, another uh, app that you do 70 uh, characters and all of this. And, and so human interactions, human relations are totally different now. And so he's trying to sound the alarm and alert people. This is somebody that is highly involved in the development of new technologies. Uh, abuses of government and technologies. Eric Snowden in this type thing trying to sound the alarm. Now, I don't agree if he, uh, you know, got some spies in trouble and that kind of stuff. That's not a good thing. But some of his overall message uh, that fa and not just governmental spying, but like Facebook is listening to phone calls now, following phone record records, following non-users their pathways through the internet, trying to see how they can get them to join Facebook. So it's a total, besides the fact that like your cell phone, this has been going on for years, um, people can, like the government, this is Fox News, you can watch it on uh, YouTube, you can punch it in. They can, if you've got your phone, your phone can be off, and they can listen to you through the microphone feature of your phone. So this is just all facts. This is the world that you're living in. This is things that George Orwell could not have dreamed about. So you're not a gadget. Get out. Explore the world. Breathe fresh air. Listen to birds. Watch clouds go through the sky. Listen to crickets. Walk barefoot. Let the soil feel something. Go out. Leave your phones at home and talk to people at your favorite coffee shop. You, you're not a gadget. You are not, you're in the image of God. So you weren't created as a gadget. So he's done a great service here. And then here, who owns the future, shows how government, not just government, how the technological industry in Silicon Valley is amassing money. Anything from uh, Amazon to Google to Facebook to Zuckerberg with the current financial landscape in the United States that you, you have super PACs that are totally unaccountable. There's no longer campaign contribution limits in the super PACs. There is to campaign finance laws and all of this. And so these people that are becoming enormously wealthy, Microsoft and the different Peter Thiel and these type of people, they're able to influence elections like never before. But he also goes into unintended consequences, how they're collapsing retail, collapsing stores like Macy's, Kmart, 
shopping malls. Uh, so we're again undergoing this huge Copernican shift in our relationships and our culture and our society. But not just in that, but they are amassing money. Apple, the biggest company that has ever existed as far as finances go. And basically they just produce electronics and cool boxes under slave labor in a certain sense in overseas and send it in. Google, all Google is is an algorithm. I, I, was, I knew a guy, I knew of a guy that uh, could have invested in Google. He says, well, I'd like to invest in things. All Google is is a skeleton back in 99. He wishes he would have invested in Google now. Uh, but he had the opportunity to be one of the first investors. So who owns the future? Let's look. Uh, the New York Times, Cleveland Plain Dealer, Washington Post, USA Today, Salon, San Francisco Chronicle, uh, Neil Stevenson all recommend this book. Um, the LA Times, people from the LA Times recommend this book. Uh, brilliant says Michiko Kukatani from the New York Times. Um, he's just got page after page, Financial Times, Publishers Weekly, uh, the writer of uh, Rim Day, I don't know if I'm pronouncing it right, Neil Stevens, Crypto Monocon. Turnings Cathedral, Master Switch. So, who owns the future? The problem in brief, put up or shut up, Moore's Law changes the way people are valued, which those of you that know science know Moore's Law, is that the amount of uh, technology that can go on a semiconductor doubles every 18 months to two years. There's other laws in effect there. The simple idea... Uh, how this century might unfold, two points of view, uh, the contest to be most meta, modern modernity conceives the future, market, energy landscapes, and narcissism, because it's a very fleshly thing. And think about this, the way virtual reality is working. They're saying by the year 2020, most video games will be virtual reality. Relationships, people that can't have relationships with real people, will have virtual relationships with virtual reality and or robots. So this is a rapidly developing thing. This is the age of Antichrist. Daniel 12, 4, knowledge shall increase. So if you want to kind of get a feel by one of the most cutting edge people out there of what this society, what this world is heading towards, the insidious devices behind it, Look, they spent millions of dollars to keep your mind and your eyes. That's the reason you go to check the news for 10 minutes. Two hours later, you're watching videos of puppies on YouTube. It was meant for human manipulation. B.F. Skinner, um, you know, Pavlov, Walden II, all of these things. Tavistock Institute, they know how to manipulate human behavior. Edward Bernays, propaganda. It's there. So you're living it. You're not a gadget. Don't be influenced by this. Influence the future and the power of the Holy Ghost. It's still the greatest thing in the world. The Bible still says redeeming the time for the days are evil. So don't get caught up in all this stuff. So God bless. I recommend these books.